Oh, we got we took care of it. Yep. You guys. All right. Brian C. Kohlberger, cause number CR2922-2805. Mr. Kohlberger is present in court. He is in custody. He is appearing with his attorney, Ms. Taylor. Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings, on behalf of the state. This is the time set in the matter for initial appearance. Mr. Kohlberger, I am going to advise you of the rights that you have in this case. I am going to go over the criminal complaint with you, and then we're going to discuss setting the matter for further hearing. You have the following rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to the presumption of innocence. That means the state bears the burden to prove that you are guilty of this offense beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to a preliminary hearing. A preliminary hearing is a probable cause hearing. At that hearing, the state must establish that more likely than not, these felony offenses were committed and you were the one that committed the felony offenses. You have a right to have that hearing within 14 days if you remain in custody. If you are bound over at that preliminary hearing to district court, if the court finds probable cause, you would be bound over to district court. And at that time, you can enter a plea of not guilty, and you can have a jury trial set within six months of your appearance in district court. At both your preliminary hearing and your jury trial, you have the right to confront and question any evidence or witnesses called against you. Call witnesses on your own behalf and compel witnesses to be present and testify at the state's expense. You have the right to be represented by a lawyer. If you cannot afford one, one could be appointed to represent you based upon your financial need. You also have the right to appeal any conviction in your case. Do you understand these rights? Yes. I am now gonna go over the criminal complaint with you. Count one of the criminal complaint charges you with the felony offense of burglary. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Laytaw County, State of Idaho, did unlawfully enter a residence located at 1122 King Road, Moscow, with the intent to commit the felony crime of murder in violation of Idaho Code 18-1401 and 1403. The maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is not less than one year in prison, no more than 10 years in prison, and or a $50,000 fine or both. Do you understand? Yes. Count two alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th, 2022, in Laytaw County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan, from which she died, in violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. The maximum penalty for this offense, if you were to plead guilty or be found guilty, is death or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count three alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022 in Laytaw County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and mur murder Kaylee Gonsalves, a human being, by stabbing Kaylee Gonsalves, from which she died. In violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, 4004. Again, the maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count four alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022 in Laytaw County, Idaho, 
uh, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Zanna Kernodal, a human being, by stabbing Zanna Kernodal, from which she died, in violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. Again, the maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count five alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Ethan Chapin, a human being, by stabbing Ethan Chapin, from which he died, in violation of Idaho Codes 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. And again, the maximum penalty for this offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. And Mr. Koberger, would you like to represent yourself, hire a lawyer, or see if you qualify for court-appointed counsel? I have court-appointed counsel. Court has reviewed your application for uh, attorney at public expense. I do find that you are indigent and do qualify for court-appointed counsel. I will appoint Ms. Taylor uh, to represent you in this case. Ms. Taylor, have you had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Koberger about a speedy preliminary hearing and setting this matter? Your Honor, I have. Um, we would ask the court to set the status hearing in a week or two to make a final determination. Okay. And Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings, are you in agreement with that? That's fine with the state, Your Honor. I will go ahead and set this matter for a status hearing then on the calendar um, on January 12th. At 10 o'clock AM. We will make sure notice is sent. And then, uh, Ms. Taylor, do you wish to uh, argue bail at this time? Your Honor, I would like to ask the court to consider setting a bond. Um, Mr. Koberger right now is on a no bond hold. But it's a limited request as I don't have enough information. We are new to the case. We haven't reviewed very much in the way of information about the case. And we have just begun our own work on the case. But we would want the court to know that Mr. Koberger has a good family that stands by him. And Mr. Thompson. You know, the state's position is that Mr. Koberger is not qualified, is not entitled to bond in this case. We can take the charges uh, as is noted on the arrest warrant itself. Code 19-816, 19-2903 both specify that given the potential penalties in this case, there's no right to bail. Um, the defendant was arrested 3,000 miles away across the country, uh, where his family is. We ask that he remain in custody. No bail. At this point in time, pursuant to Idaho Criminal 46B and Idaho Code 18. Excuse me, 19-816 and 2903. I am going to leave uh, the bail set at this case as no bail at this point in time um, until I have additional or further information um, at a later date in time. So uh, with that, then Mr. Koberger, you will be remanded in custody and remain in custody on the no bail pending further proceedings in this matter. Is there anything further in the case then for today, Mr. Thompson? Yes, sir. Um, the state is asking for no contact orders for various family members of the deceased and also for the two surviving roommates. I've spoken briefly with Ms. Taylor. She indicated there's no objection. And Ms. Taylor, is that correct? That is correct. 
So um, I will go ahead and issue those no contact orders. So I do have a no contact order then for um, the named uh, individual of Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk, um, as well as the family members and of uh, Mr. Chapin, um, the family members of Ms. Pernodal. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Yes, Mr. and Ms. Laramie, Mr. Mogan, Ms. Cheely, and then a number of members of the Gonsalves family. Um, those specific names uh, will certainly be provided to you, Mr. Uh, Koberger, by way of being provided notice of these um, documents. You'll get a copy of these no contact orders. What you do need to be advised of and what will be in this no contact order is you are prohibited from having any contact with them whatsoever. You cannot contact them through a third person in, a writing, in writing or by any electronic means. You cannot Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, use the phone to communicate with them or otherwise um, any form of communication in, in direct or indirectly with them. Um, you cannot engage um, in any conduct that would harass, stalk, threaten, use, attempt to use, or threaten to use any physical force or violence upon them, or place them in reasonable fear of bodily injury. You cannot go within or knowingly remain within 300 feet of their person or their home, workplace, or um, any other uh, place where they might be. There are no exceptions to these orders. Uh, and if you do violate these orders, it is a new misdemeanor offense. It is punishable by up to a year in jail and or a $1,000 fine or full. At this point in time, um, due to being in the magistrate's division here um, at this juncture, I am going to issue uh, the no contact orders for a period of two years. Um, and then if it needs to be modified or changed by additional judge, um, it can be done so at that time. Is there anything further, uh, Mr. Thompson? No, Your Honor. Anything further, Ms. Taylor? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. We are adjourned.